Hello, I'm just getting set up. Please bear with me. And I've forgotten which way I have to put the camera in so you can hear me. So let me know if you can't hear me. Just getting my laptop set up. I won't be a second. Anyone joining? Someone's here. Hello, Karen. I'm just getting set up. Sounds like I can hear myself, so that's good. <laughs> that's obviously working. Right, let's just move you about a bit. Right, excuse me for a second. Hello, Mary. Hello, Marie. Right, should be all good. Okay, thank you for joining me. I can't see any comments yet. No, that's just telling me that people are here. Right, here we go. Hello, Morag. Can you hear me okay, everybody? Before I start. Mary. Right, should be okay, I think. Just let me know that you can hear me okay. I'll just share this into our group. we'll get started so we're going to be working on this wood out a uh, big cog today this is cog uh two so it's a 30 uh, centimeter cog so it's a big cog so if i give you a piece of scrapbook paper oh lovely thanks lady if i give you a piece of scrapbook paper to give you an idea so there you go it fills a scrapbook paper so these are big pieces, they make great gifts, great home decor, something you can hang up in your craft room, really love to work on them. And if you're joining us in the retreat this year, on the online retreat, you're going to get to use the anchor that we have there. Um, so, sorry, I'm just faffing about it. Just decided at the last minute I wanted to look for something which I still couldn't find and um, so then it meant I was a bit late getting all the computers set up so let's just do that computer problems right there we go okay let's get going right let me move all this stuff pulled out loads of bits and bobs to play with so i'm going to be playing with um some wood art bits and lots of hobbylicious goodies hello michelle today as well as some papers from ab studio and some other bits and bobs as i go along depends what i feel like um so we're going to be using some pentart crackle paste and some metals and some molded pieces from prima molds so um paints we'll we'll see what i pick up as we go along hello if you're joining us hello allison right so we've got our base um i'm not going to gesso this straight away because i don't have a plan i don't want to keep gessoing and then having to gesso again and again so I'm going to wait to gesso until I've decided on my construction. Um, so this will form the base and then I've got some various other bits and bobs. So 
let's have a look i am going to apply my crackle to my base before i start pasting because it'd be very difficult say i stick this down to then get a palette knife or brush into those areas um so this is a part of a piece from hobbylicious we've got on the website it's a three layered piece um it's a very big kit you can see so this is 12 by 12 so you can see this fills the center so yeah quite big again um i've got some other bits this is hobbylicious as well barbed wire ring i was thinking this might look quite good um, it goes with the kind of steampunky grungy feel and it'll sit nicely kind of as a middle. I'm going to play off the circles against each other. Um, well that's going to be my main bases, I think. And then we'll play with some other bits I've got from the, um, the creative discs. So I thought this could work well as well. So that looks quite nice there. Might need raising up a bit. Um, and then I've got some smaller bits. So let's have a look. So we've got the new wood out smaller elements. I thought these could look good. Maybe one or two. Uh, maybe a different cog like this one. And maybe some more towards the edges so i'm just gonna have a play first to get my kind of general idea so that looks quite good um and what else have i got here let's see i've got these um wood out keys so the sorry i should tell you so the cogs that's a five piece cog set um you can get these are all on the website Hello Rashmi. Um, I've got the keys, the steampunk key three set as well. I thought maybe one of those might look quite cool. So let's see. Maybe the smallest one. So that's all looking good. Uh, let's see what else. Um, the ladies kind of gave me the bits that kind of come out of the middle of things and they look quite good. And I thought these had a really mechanically sort of feel, like they could join bits together. So I've got a few of those. I might dot those around. Okay, so something like this. And then I think I'll decide on the smaller bits as we go. So I'm going to take all that back off. I'm going to start by crackle paste on the bottom so I've got an idea with that now so let's move these out of the way and pop that over there so many things on my desk <laughs> when I put crackers well, let me get in the middle again okay so pent art crackle so we have a primer and it's really important you use this with the paste or this is not going to crack. You'll just have a paste. So we, I'm going to use a brush because I want to cover pretty much the whole area. That's not a very good brush. Let's get a better one. don't want bristles sticking everywhere. And you don't need to be too, um, too heavy handed with the primer. So we're just looking to cover most of the... Uh, area so if wherever this doesn't go it's not going to crack so you want to make sure you get pretty much everywhere or everywhere you want a crackle anyway and this is going to add to my kind of worn grungy look that I'm going for with this one um, it's a really good and easy to use it's never failed me yet <laughs> As long as you use it correctly and you've got the primer on, um, I can't see, unless you've got some sort of crazy weather conditions, perhaps like it's extra humid or something like that, or I don't know, something cr like ridiculously cold or something like that. I can't imagine why this wouldn't work. If I can do it, 
anyone can I'm sure um, it's a foolproof for me oh, as I've had other ones where I've not always got the desired effect and the other bonus with this one is you don't need to leave it to dry naturally and in fact it seems to work better when you do it with the heat gun so again bonus points for me because I don't like waiting I'm very impatient okay so that's covered uh, the area I'm just going to wipe off where I was a bit heavy handed in some parts so we don't need too much okay get rid of my brush right so we're going to dry that first oh thank you Margaret appreciate it so just excuse the uh, heat gun a moment <clears throat> and it doesn't need to be bone dry the primer just kind of tacky dry Now the um, thickness you put this on will uh, give you different crackles so if we put a thin layer on we're going to get fine uh, crackles and not so deep and if we put it on a bit thicker we'll get wide thick cracks so I'm going to try and do um, a bit of both. Um, you can use this for a stencil so if you wanted to get a stencil you know a patterned crackle yep yeah, you can do that too and it looks very nice and i'm not going to worry if i there's any bits i miss because um i'm going to gesso everything after anyway hello shirley thanks for joining me so i'm going to go thin in some areas and thick in others okay to try and get this variety of crackles And I think that sort of unevenness will help again with this kind of old worn look. So it's a really good product, not just for grungy steampunk, but also for vintage. Hello, Cleo. Thanks for coming. Um, yeah, so if you want to do a um, an old piece, like a vintage piece, not necessarily grungy, but old looking, this is a great product to help with that look and you can apply it with a brush again as well um, I think this helps with the palette knife to get the um, thickness though you know and smooth it out like if you wanted a more smooth layer I think you'd find it a little bit easier with a palette knife rather than a brush And you can see in some parts it's already starting to crackle which is nice oh i've got a big blob there um i wouldn't go too thick because you'll find that chunks will fall off okay i'm just going to tidy up the kind of some of the bits where I've scraped it a bit. My camera stands a bit in the way, so it's a bit awkward to get some parts. Okay. Right, so that's enough of that. And now we're going to dry and see what look we get. Where did I put wipes? I think I buried them. I'm just going to get some wipes. I won't be a second. I'll get some new ones. It'll be easier than trying to lift everything up. Right, just wipe 
want my palette knife. Okay, so I'm going to heat dry again and watch the magic. Are you ready? So obviously the areas you've applied it thicker are going to take a little bit longer to dry. Um, but if you're going to be adding colour, so especially with very watery mediums like ink sprays, um, it's really important to take the time to get this dried properly, um, as you're going to get a sludgy mess and you'll ruin that crackle, you'll basically kind of wash it away. Um, so do take a bit of time to get this bit right, it's really going to alter the overall finish. Sorry if you just saw my head. <laughs> I was wondering what the heck was on my phone. It's just the sticker on the back. So you can see down here it's crackled nicely already. What's everyone been up to this weekend then? Um, while I'm drying I will have a chat to you. So I've been packing goodie bags for our retreat. Um, if you are interested in coming I do have a couple of spare kits. You're not too late so drop me a message. It's the first weekend of, of October rather. Um, online so it's in a private Facebook group and you'll get kits and goodie bags posted to you. Hello Pauline. Um, also t today only, it's just today left now, we've got a 15% off sale. So it excludes the sale items but they're already discounted for you anyway. And if you put in sale 15, all one word, small letters, you will get 15% off. I am using Pentart Crackle, so it's a primer and paste system, Ugh, which I can't reach. So you pop this on, not too thick, dry it, and then you add the paste, and different thicknesses will get you a different look. So thinner will get finer, more cracks, and then thicker, less, but deep and wide cracks. Uh, so yes, yeah, so don't forget our sale, so that ends midnight tonight, so thompsonscraftsupplies.com, 15% off everything basically, because the sale section is already discounted, so don't miss out on that, maybe a good time to get some Christmas gifts, yeah they're brilliant aren't they, they never let you down these, I've never had a problem yet, and if it is, you know, it's probably that you haven't put the primer everywhere. Um, so what else do I have to tell you about? Let me have a think. Um, 13 Arts, we will be getting that very soon. I'm putting the order in today. So uh, four new collections there. Um, beautiful, beautiful papers. You may have seen my samples I did for LG Crafts design team. So I had the wintry type collection. Uh, it's beautiful. I'm more of a winter crafter than a Christmas. Um, so if that's your cup of tea, that's definitely going to be one for you. And it's not necessarily Christmassy, it's a woodland sort of theme. Um, and then there's an Italian sort of themed one, uh, end of summer, which is like um, sunflowers and nice warm colours. And there's also a kind of blue themed collection for the floor. So they're all coming. AB Studio and Minte Papers should be due, Minte Papers definitely should be due any day now. So we've got three new cutting books there and um, four or is it five I've lost count now I think it's four it might be five new collections um, so that's all coming AB studio we've got another four collections there plus some new items no no 
news yet. Uh, we're just waiting for our lawyer to do the final um, report so that we can pay deposits and then discuss dates. So hopefully next week. Um, fingers crossed. Can you see these gorgeous crackles appearing? Let's have a feel everywhere. Okay, I think that is pretty much done. So I'll hold that up a bit so you can see it. Cool. Alright, um, so yes, news. So yes, 13 Arts, Minte, AB Studio, all coming. Yes, and that's another good thing about 13 Arts. It is ridiculously cheap. Um, we'll be restocking a few other bits from them as well. Um, what else? What else? I don't know. Is there anything else? I don't think so at the moment. Right, so we've got that on. So let's now stick um, all those bits that we already decided on and we'll decide on some other bits as well, I imagine. Um, so I'm going to be trying out a new thing today. Um, you know how I love my gels and heavy body gel or 3D gels in particular. So I'm trying out Pentart heavy body gel. Now I did take the lid off and I had a little poke with um, my palette knife and it seems like it's going to be a good one. It's very thick. Uh, where have I hidden my bin? There. Oh, sorry. So, I'm feeling good things about this. So, look, it's nice. It's not coming off easily from the palette knife. So, I think this is going to be good. It looks promising. So, this is on the website now too. I had to um, order some things and I needed to make up my order, you know, make it a bit worthwhile ordering. So I thought, oh, I'll give that a go. Let's see what it's like. So I think I'm liking this. We'll see how it grips in a minute. I'm quite particular about my gels. <laughs> I'm a bit fussy. So we'll see if it stands up to my test. So um, we don't need to cover everywhere, just some points so that it's going to make contact. Um, when we put this down, it may be that we need to add some more because don't forget we've put that crackle and it's quite thick in some places. So it's going to be an uneven surface. Now I wanted to put this kind of off center a little bit. It's not too bad. I say it's a bit uneven, so I'm going to need to um, add a bit more in places. Let's try and wipe this out. Might be handy if I can get that lock actually. That gives me a nice big area to stick down. So let's stick that onto a onto one of the cogs because so that'll help me because it's quite thin this frame it's a three-part frame actually um but i've decided to use mine in separate layers so this would have something else to stick on to ordinarily i've decided to use it a bit different so not bad not bad this gel um i'd say it compares more to the Prima 3D gel and Fabrica 3D gel, but not it's not the um, same as Prima's heavy body gel because that is like um, where's my pot? This is something different <laughs> entirely. Can you see the difference? This is like. <laughs> really dense so it's more of what i would call a 3d gel to me personally than a heavy body gel 
um it is so it will dry clear and it is a matte one which is good because a lot of gloss so i don't have to worry too much about having shiny patches or anything like that okay so i'm gonna carry on and see how that does i may need to come back later it's not particularly heavy so we might be all right okay so next i'm gonna have this barbed wire so that was hobbylicious this one is hobbylicious as well this one's a bit wider so it'll be a little bit easier to stick and again this is an important part we need to take a bit of time to get the gluing right um if we don't do that and then things start falling off you know you finish it all it looks wonderful and then everything falls off <laughs> that's a little bit annoying because you've spent a long time <clears throat> excuse me trying to get you know everything just how you wanted it and then it falls off <clears throat> you're not going to be very happy really are you um right, let's see i want this there yeah <clears throat> sorry i'm a bit croaky ever since i went away <clears throat> and i think it's where the weather's changing a bit I had a bit of a croak right so i'll stick him there so this is um craft board um similar to chipboards it's got sticky fingers and it's sticking to me <clears throat> Let me just have a drink. I've got a bit of a frog in my throat here. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears> hmm, <throat> that's better. I should have got hot tea. That always helps a bit more. Um, right, so that's that bit. Um, I was gonna have this there somewhere, I think. So this is a wood out cog. These are made of HDF, so high density fiberboard, and it's quite thick. So this is a bit thicker than the um, Hobbylicious. So I like to use them together, so you get different thicknesses, you get different feels. It just gives different looks all together. And there's a really uneven bit there from the crackle. Squish it down a bit. There we go. And there was another cog somewhere. What what would you use heavy body gel rather than 3D gel for? So if something like this I was doing because it's an uneven surface <clears throat> and it just refused to stick, I would switch to my heavy body gel. Um, also, if you're sticking something particularly heavy, so a big metal, a big clay piece, um, you know, if this was a solid big piece of MDF, that sort of thing. <clears throat> also, they can be used for stenciling. So say you had the perfect colour in an ink spray of red and you didn't have that red, anything else, but you wanted to make a something you could put through your stencil in this red color um you could mix the little bit of ink with the heavy body gel and because it's so heavy so dense it wouldn't completely destroy the um density of the paste so you'd still be able to um then stencil it does that make sense because it's so thick to start with that it can handle a little bit of moisture from the ink whereas 3d gel is not as thick so the more liquids we're going to add to it it's going to become too runny to get a crisp stenciling so i really like to make my own gels to stencil with from heavy body um, so my favorite mixture for example is the premium pasto paint so i'm going to be using in a little bit uh, mixed with a bit of heavy body gel they make a great heavily pigmented and heavy bodied gel so it's just an alternative to 
a paste because paste are not see-through so if you if i was to mix um a paint into a white texture paste it's going to dilute the color because the paste itself is already colored white whereas with a gel that won't happen so it's for sticking sticking bulky and awkward pieces but also to make very dense um gels custom gels for ourselves okay and i need to think about what is this piece about now i'm randomly sticking bits down but i haven't had a thought what is what am i wanting the person to look at here um what is this piece about so i'm going to have a look in a minute and decide what my focus is so i've kind of left a bit in the middle i've sort of built up a kind of base here and um, it's a good idea to decide especially if it's a photo or something um you want to use to decide on the focal point first really i'm just having a play so i'm not you know I'm not too concerned but we do need to give something to look at otherwise the eyes just kind of darting everywhere and it's like oh that's nice but what what am I supposed to be looking at here so that's all my main MDFs and um, let's just give that a quick blast oh good I'm glad Michelle yes Margaret absolutely and just things as well like if you've got something round so for instance if we were to glue like a brush on or a twig um a, a big bead that was round you know um a sphere it, it allows you that instant grip so i would say this is good um it's very reasonable price for a large pot this is a 230 mil pot um, not as good for me as Fabrica and um, Prima but it's very you know it's done the job absolutely uh, so for this sort of thing it's perfectly fine and for the price I think that makes it a very good option um, so it may be that I will use this um, because it's more cost effective and then if I come across something that won't stick then I could just switch to my Prima or Fabrica say so yeah it's perfectly fine absolutely and I'm finding now with a little bit of heat that's sticking much better actually it's it's getting very strong now and I'd be absolutely confident that's not going to come off it's um, seeming very strong with a little blast of heat so that's good and I like the fact that it's matte as well right so that's those sort of stuff now let's have a little think on our um, centerpiece before we go any further so I've got this sort of bit wackier chipboard set from AB Studio that's sort of steampunky gothicy spooky oh we've got the sh shell and then he said then skull <laughs> um i'm not sure these are quite big enough though it's like wings with clocks i think we need something a little bit bigger i mean it could be him but i'm not sure that's kind of what i'm going for um so no i'm gonna pass on those yeah exactly although i find the danger of that is cleo i mean it's not such a problem with you because i imagine you know your new things you've made are in front of you anyway but i find then i forget to sometimes to use newer things um or the opposite and i've cleared away all my older stuff and put it away and then i only use new things so I could have this big moulded piece coming down the middle. This is Prima mould. I love this one. Somehow it escaped me when it first came out. And then I saw someone using it. And I was like, oh, I have to have that one. I love that. So I think that will make a nice base. This was a 
one I forgot to squish as it was drying, so it's gone a bit wacky shape. I don't think that's working for me. That could work. So I'm looking for some smaller, different embellishments now. So these are moulded pieces using Prima moulds that we have. Okay, that could go there. That's kind of like a clock, a key, wind up a clock. So that fits quite well. And again, I like to mix materials. So we've got cogs, but let's have different cogs. Let's have wooden cogs. Let's have molded cogs. And we've got some chipboard cogs as well and metal cogs. So really play around. Do, 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 do. and then yes we need to think on our focal point I have another clock and all the time I'm trying to direct the middle I don't want too much around the edge because it's going to scatter the eye and it's going to try and look everywhere so little bits on the edges but mainly making everything look towards this kind of middle bit that I'm aiming for um, so we'll have lots of little layers here, I think. Little clusters. So there's something going on, but not too much. Not too much. Mm, no, don't like that. Um, Maybe this. Yes, that's better. And then that's kind of pointing up there again. Right, some more metals. And then we need to remember to stick all this down. You go at the end to pick it up and oops, I didn't stick that bit down. Whoopsie. And um, we might need some little bits of chipboard and stuff underneath to bring this, uh, make everything level. Uh, the other one can go there. Okay, that looks pretty good. We're going to fill in some bits here. And I like to mix my metals. Yes, I've got some expensive ones like these, some mitt form. But I'm not going to cover my whole piece of work in mitt form. You know, I am, at the end of the day, I am a crafter first and foremost. And who's got the money to completely cover their entire work in mitt form or premium embellishments? They are beautiful and I use them. But I'm going to use one or two. I'm not going to cover my whole work in them. That would be ridiculously expensive. Especially when I'm just playing here, you know. Oh, we've got a really big crackly bit there. Okay, I think that's enough for those. So, hello Manu. Um, I'll just check once more if I want any more little cogs maybe or i've got a little clock here and don't worry about the colors because we're going to cover all of this up right so that's that okay now we need to decide on our focal point before we go any further so i've got some i didn't like those um i might just add in a couple of these actually while i'm here Ooh. So these are Hobbylicious, it's an A4, so it's nice and big. Different sizes and types of cogs, I love this one. You can get this on our um, website. Yes, exactly, Cleo. We just put them carefully and also put them near the top. So if you're gonna use it and commit to using it, there's no point putting it at the bottom and then covering it up. You've just covered up, <laughs> you know, one of your most expensive and decorative embellishments and wasted it. And if you do that, so think about those a bit later on, you know, at this kind of stage. Eh. Let me 
again. One of those. We'll have three of these, I think. More the smaller ones because I've got quite a lot of big embellishments on there already. So let's have two more. And they've got little tabs, so you pull towards the tab and then you won't break the piece itself. That does make me very cross when you've paid for, you know, sometimes expensive embellishments and then you break them and get in the mic. That makes me very, very cross. I don't like that at all. Right, and then you just trim the little tabs off, okay? Uh, that's going to sit there. I think that's a bit too wobbly there. Well, let's pick a bit off. There we go. All right, well. Because if there's too much paste there for that to sit nicely. Problem solved. There we go. Right, now. Back to what I was saying. Centerpiece, centerpiece. So, I have got... Let's see. I've got... She says... Got lots of AB Studio cut apart sheets, so I thought we could have a look in there. So I've got this one, Vintage People. I thought that might go nicely. Um, that is um, part of one of the cut apart sets, I think. It's called Vintage People, anyway. We've got the Love of Old Things cut apart sheet in the collection set. So one of these portraits could look nicely, maybe on a door or something. I'm going to go patinery sort of colours, so that goes nice. Um, I've got Wonderland sheet 10, so this is in the Wonderland set. I think they're a bit too big, so we'll pass on that. Here's that same wacky kind of element steampunk melody this is in one of the um the sets with all the cut parts in the ab studio do we've got two of them crafters bundle they're called so this is in crafters bundle i want to say two but don't quote me on that have a look on the website you'll see so i don't think i want to use any of those i'm leaning towards this one i think I like the door will go nicely and then maybe a portrait on the top I think so let's cut that out to see how the size works then we'll get all this stuck down gessoed and coloured before we add these in so I'm gonna try this door size see how that looks just before I cut it out properly so we would need to move this a bit I think so I'm going to cover up that nice cog maybe I'll move that cog it might be too big because I'm going to lose all that in the middle so there is a mini door though with on a tag so let's try that one instead I don't want to lose everything I've done and this is why it's probably a better idea or at least before you stick things down to choose your centerpiece yeah that one works much better because you don't want to cover up all the lovely work you've done so we'll have that and then we're going to have a portrait so let's see i think i need a smallerish portrait now so i'm going to put aside vintage people i think this sheet is better thank you margaret um I think when you've got the right things it's very easy but you you don't have to use all this you know you don't have to use all new things and just a little bit of this and then find things you know find some metal bits some bolts some screws you know packaging uh, mix that in um so let's try this chappy see how he looks quite grand with a big moustache it's a bit like my granddad let's try him how does he look mm, 
it's not doing it for me i don't think that's the right colors let's try another one um actually i've got a better idea let's try a tim holtz uh photo booth let's see if there's someone in here that looks good so love these all different eras and like different kinds of black and white sepia single people couples children all sorts mm -hmm. that lady's quite good we might have to it's probably a bit of a longer demo today i apologize just needed to have a bit of fun um so by all means feel free to go away and come back and whatnot who's this lady oh what about this man there we go that man Right, so I've got those now. I'm just going to give them a trim a bit. Perfect. And let's cut the door out properly because I've got the edges on there. And it is a tag, remember? So these tags are great to um, just slot into layers. Um, so you can build up, just from the tags alone, you can build up some fab layers um, on cards or anything. Right, so that's going to be my kind of base at the end. So we'll pop them up there. Right, let's get everything glued. Give it a quick blast and then start colouring. Now I am actually going to be using impastos for my base colouring. Yeah, it's getting there, Margaret. Uh, Morag even, sorry. Uh, because I'm going to be using pastos, they are matte. They're very heavy bodied and very pigmented. So actually I can cheat and not gesso because I know that this particular paint is thick enough to get away without that so i can skip that stage if you're using a thinner or more transparent uh, or translucent type paint then definitely go ahead and gesso this is an opaque right so pardon me first of all let's get all these bits and bobs stuck down right um so let's start here i do an area at a time and I'll know that everything is stuck. And as I've said, in some areas, I might need to add a little bit of chipboard or, um, you know, MDF offcut to stabilise the piece so that it's got something flat to stick on so it's much easier for it to then stick we'll see how we go i know some of the bits down here definitely do okay i'm working my way around now so this is the kind of thing you might want to use um your prima heavy body because these are very heavy we'll see no i think that'll be okay it's got a nice grip and when we heat it a little bit as i said before it seemed to then work better once it had a bit of heat okay so that's that area All right this is the section where i may need a little bit of chipboard so we'll start with this fella got hair on my finger it's bugging me go away there we go so we'll start there that's okay And we've got our new mold. And this mold I would definitely recommend using resin. It was a bit fiddly because there's some really thin 
edges it was a bit fiddly for um clay it was very difficult to get that in there and then get them out without breaking them so i need a little bit of chipboard scrap so i've got a little bag of all my gray boards and chipboards and things for this very purpose so i just need a little bit on one side of the clock so that it sits flat so you just pop a bit of that gel on stick it on my clock or on the other side you know Anna. and then more gel And there we go, that now sits nice and flat on top there. Cob on the top. There, right, this big piece. Now, this is big and there's some gaps in there. So I would recommend some chipboard or something on there as well. gives it a bit more something to stick to so I'm going to pop on this piece a little bit more yeah that's going to work and then whoops not that much a little bit at the top so that's raised that level with this bit now so it sticks better Oh, we haven't stuck this big one yet. Oh, why did I shut my laptop? Thanks for sticking with me. It's a bit of a long one today, I know. That piece went a bit curly. So that might need a bit of encouragement to stick that one. And I don't want to press too hard because it is the sort of paper clay type stuff. Right, where have I not glued? So there, there's that little one. Oops, that was a bit too much gel, wasn't it? Um, anywhere I've missed. Oh, I've got this little clock, haven't I? Oh, and that one. Okay. That is all stuck, I think. Did I miss anything? No. Right. Now I'm going to give a little blast again because I know that that helped it all stick before. So we'll do that again. And I do anyway, to be honest, when you've got a lot of elements like this. A little bit of heat. The Prima 3D gel takes a long time to dry as well. Um, if you're wanting something that dries quicker, then you are better with the Prima Heavy Body Gel or the Fabrica 3D gels. I'm going to just remove those so I don't curl them. Um, the Prima 3D gel does take a longer time to dry completely. Um, it's again, it's just defining a balance yeah thanks Shirley yeah I don't want to show you I want to show you the process you know you don't want to see it finished you need to understand how the kind of layers come together um yes yeah, so I'd say with the gels just like the embellishments it's about finding a balance you know cost effectiveness and practicality so I'm not going to use personally cream a heavy body gel for everything because it's not as cheap and you don't get as much because you use more um but i'll use it when i need to so um yeah just finding a bounce there really let's see which bits are a bit wibbly wobbly oops that wasn't stuck And if you're using metal and your heat gun, obviously be careful when you touch things because the metal is going to heat up. Do not burn yourself, it hurts very badly. <laughs> so be careful. 
okay that should be enough right let's start getting some color so i've picked out impasto paints my favorite super super thick so i've got dark chocolate linen snow white uh, burlap black and maybe for a little hint jade okay so my white might be knackered i didn't put the lid back on but i might not need it uh, it might have a little bit of life we'll see so i'm going to squeeze out a bit onto my mat of each of these and um we'll start playing with a paintbrush and see what happens so i'll show you how they look not my white because my white's knackered because i didn't look after it so this is how they'll look very thick very pigmented and just off to my this way i'm just squeezing a little bit of each out oh dear i cleaned my black very well last time i used it um not too much jade because that's just going to be little highlights probably going to be mostly using jade linen uh, sorry burlap linen and dark chocolate i think right so paintbrush and let's go and um, being careful because some of that's still drying so this first one is burlap i'm going to be using oops with a little bit of black apparently <laughs> and don't worry a little bit of your crackle may come off and i'm just going to mix in bits of the other colors as i go um they dry fairly quick so you've only got a limited amount of time and what we can do ah that's what i forgot to do fill up my water bottle one second i knew there was something i'd forgotten before but i couldn't remember what it was just gonna fill my spray bottle up like I was saying <laughs> where we can't get to the bits so well we can use our water spray to move the paint where we want it and mix the colors together as well at the same time so we can put a bit of paint on here and being careful because our gel isn't completely dry And we can use the water to move it into those layers. That little monkey wasn't stuck properly. So I'm just kind of picking up different bits of colour and blending them together and anywhere I can't quite get. Oh hi Joan. Anywhere I can't quite get to we can put a bit of paint down and then spritz it and it will drip into those kind of under layers. Oops. And anything I've missed, I'm going to be waxing later as well. So I won't be too worried. I'm just going to dry that a little bit. So that's a bit wibbledy wobbledy. Right, and let's carry on. again here i can't quite get down into all those layers so i can spritz it and get it dripping down in there 
can by all means of course paint each layer I'm just a bit lazy it's my cheap way of doing it I will say though do stop every so often when you're doing this and give it a dry because we don't want to wreck all that um, gel work that's not completely dry under there yet don't forget so we don't want to completely ruin that so every now and then just stop and give it a bit of a blast more layers so you could dry this and then come in with another layer hopefully you're getting the idea so I'm not cleaning my brush so I get these different tones appearing in the paint um, so I want it to all kind of work together so they're just kind of different shades of each other I suppose me Paracal Thanks if you're just joining me and if you're still here, thank you for your patience. <laughs> so we can obviously use black and white is very important. So we can highlight or lighten colours with the white and we can add shadows and darken colours with our black as well. Oops, see gel's not dry yet so let's take that as a hint and give it a bit of a dry i'm gonna add some patina look in a moment so I was thinking to use some of my pent up patina set on top of this kind of base colours. It's still alright, it's gluey enough. This bit I think needs a little bit more gel though. It's because it's bouncing carefully. I wasn't on very secure to start with. Right, I'm just gonna put those wipes. Right. And I'll get a smaller paintbrush now so I can get in the little bits I've missed. I'm not gonna worry too much as I say. I've got waxes I can use later.
and I've got the second set of paint as well. Ooh, there's a whole big bit here I can even touch. I won't craft too much because I'm going to be here forever. What's what time is it? Yeah, it's 3 o'clock already. I don't like to keep more than an hour and a half. That's too long. I think. So we'll have a little play with the patina set now and some of that impasto jade. Hi Ellie. So these dry um, quickly the impastos but because I've added quite a lot of water some of the areas need a bit longer to dry. Again, be careful of your metals, not to burn yourself. Right, that's kind of dry enough to make sure that bits aren't going to fall off. Oh, thanks, Maura. Yeah, I think when you kind of blend the colours, um, it helps. Plus, also need to remember that in pastos, where they're so thick, they'll create that texture for you. So as you say, it then looks a bit more realistic. It's not a smooth paint. So any kind of texture tools or thick blobs of paint we put on are really going to show up. Right, so Tina set. You, in this one you get um, four uh, matte paints in kind of green blue tones and then a gold metallic in the rust set you get four paints plus a powder to give the rusty texture so we're going to play again now with these tones I'm not meh, yeah we'll use a little bit of jade as well oops my paint up. Oh, I might need to get a little pin in there. I think I've clogged it. Um, where's my book at all? Oh, there we go. <laughs> so, not too much of these now. Um, this is why I've used base colour. These are small paints, you know. I don't want to use my whole set of paints covering this whole piece so I'm just going to use these as um, highlights or just touches of colour okay and then we'll have a little bit of that jade as well and I will use a little bit because as I say very pigmented then I'll finish off with that metallic that's in the kit so just a little touch of jade Right, so here we go again, and I'll stick to my small brush. Right, so now we're going more patinery, um, and it'll if there's wet bits still, that's fine. It'll just blend together a bit more, and again, you want to kind of mix these together so they look a bit more natural. And we can use this as well to cover anywhere we missed previously. So we're alternating and kind of mixing and overlapping these different paints in the set plus that um, bit of jade. So you can do this where you take one colour, sort of dab a bit of that everywhere. As long as you don't let it dry and then you can get another color mix that in a bit overlap and mix together which is a little bit easier perhaps when you've got a big area like this to work on 
and I don't want to lose all of that colour I've already done. And if you think of this kind of like a highlight, you know, like you would with wax, we're not going to cover everything. And in fact, you can wipe them back if it's getting a bit too much, you think. And this also will help pick out those textures look at that on the mold see that's all coming back to the surface any of those nice big crackles you've got as well you can kind of rub that into the crackles so you just kind of keep playing with this until you're happy um, you could spend all day doing this trust me uh, you need to know when to stop though that's key Right, I'm going to pick it up a little bit so I can get in there and see the real bad areas I've missed. Oh look, there's a whole bit there. Oh no, that's gel. <laughs> okay, don't want that. And I'm going to just use my water spritzer again just to help it get oh strangle myself get down into those little cracks better. And we're nearly done now, folks. Thank you very much for sticking with me. I just got to dry a bit of wax oh, and my metallic. And our centerpiece. Okay, let's give it a dry. And we'll go in with some of that metallic. And some wax as well. We'll do a this is a kind of gold metallic or bronze. So we'll use a different kind of shade of wax. So you can see quite easily, just with some layering and a bit of patience, you can quite easily make a very detailed looking piece you know something that looks really complicated and isn't it's a case of sticking you know layering placement and patience and then just building up paint there was no particular technique here it's just dabbing this a bit of that and I just think if you put a few different colours down and overlap those and remember to dry if it starts to get too too wet um, you can quite easily build up this rungier look you can do the same kind of thing with paler colours so you could have rather than the browner base you could have a whiter base and then do your patina that would look really pretty too. I want it fairly dry now. So while that's drying, let's pick out. So we've got this, and I want another. We've got some matte back, so we could try a bit of that perhaps. Let's have a look. 
in my piles. <laughs> Try a bit of white wax. I'm going to be getting some more of the matte waxes soon. They were out of stock for ages, but they're starting to come back in now. Can I find the one I'm looking for? Can I, heck? Okay, white will do then. Oh, there it is, right in front of my nose. And let's have my old favourite age brass. Oh, I need to turn my piece around. And this is where this will come to life now, with this wax and the metallic on top of all this matte paint, okay? That's dry enough. So we'll start with the paint. So we're dry brushing here. We're not looking for... Oh, goodness me. Shot out a bit. Okay, no problem. <laughs> I think I needed a shake. Uh, so a dry brush just to cover the tops. So we're dabbing in, wiping a lot off, and then just kind of brushing over the tops. And this will help as well. If you feel that crackles kind of disappeared into the background a bit, it will help you to pick that back up definitely needed to shake that gold paint it's okay it's gonna look a bit like gold leaf now so maybe this was a really luxurious golden machine part to start with originally and it's been abandoned and the weather and the years have got to it and now it's a bit patinaed and a bit a bit rusty and sorry looking. And this is what's happened. I'm just tilting it a bit so I can see. I'm trying to um get the kind of textured bits and just the kind of tops so if you stand above and have a look or you know stand it up and stand away and look at it that will help you see where it needs Age brass, yeah, it just goes with everything for me. I think some people are silver people. <laughs> um, so maybe silver is more you. Uh, I'm not going to waste all that yummy gold paint that's splattered out. So I've got something here. I will pick that up on. And that can be the start of something else. There we go. Waste not, want not. Right, another little blast, then some wax, and then stick on that door and photo, don't forget, that's going to be our thing. And a title, of course. I have to have a title. It's not done for me without a title. There are some white bits, but I think that's kind of adding to this look for me. Not to make an excuse, but it does go with this feel. So I'm okay with that in this case. Yeah, we've got aged brasses on the website. We've got quite a few of those actually. Probably because it's my favourite. I ended up ordering a lot of them. I need to do a lot of restocks of Prima um, over the next coming months. Uh, where I've been a bit crackers trying to keep up with all the new paper ranges. I'm aware that some things have suffered a little bit. Um, if there is ever anything you can't find or you're waiting on, do give me a shout because then I can prioritise that for you. Right, so let's start with my matte waxes. So these, I've got a couple but not very many. Um, so this is, basically we would have used um, gesso before but where 
gesso will soak in you know um, and you might need to do three or four or five or six layers to get it to show up um, this has that same look of using gesso but where it's it's the properties of a wax so it's it's permanent it's um, going to sit on top so you're not going to have to put on six layers and yeah it's going to dry permanent so you've got all the great properties of a wax but with the look of gesso and we'll just work that in in a minute um, we'll add a bit of patina green so that was old white this is patina green mine are still fairly new so they're very very soft they're much softer than the um, regular waxes so be very light handed with these if it's something you're going to use and it's another way of getting the rusty or patinaed feel without using the um, pastes that Prima do you can get a very similar feel um, just with a little bit of wax so say you could put on some art stones and texture yourself and then just run a bit of this over the top okay so I'm going to buff them up a little bit I think is it Kasha's influence <laughs> I do like silver but I tend to where I like um, kind of grungier projects I think it just tends to lend itself a bit more to um, gold usually I do like silver though um, you could do this same project with a kind of futuristic feel um, so you could go silver that would look quite cool and then like age it with black and grey tones maybe that would look really good so I'm just kind of buffing a bit of this back off where it's a bit too in your face now um, age brass my hands are getting very sticky my favourite and again this is a highlight so we're, we're not putting too much on and we're rubbing over the top so we're not covering everything up that we've done this is just to help go hey look at me you know to bring a bit out to the forefront or any any kind of textures to pick those up anything that's got a bit lost like there's a nice cog there and um they're similar to furniture waxes so the more you kind of work them the shinier they'll get you can kind of buff them okay I think that's enough now our centerpiece and then we're done oh I'm very sticky I'm gonna take it back and that <laughs> can you <laughs> that uh pen art it just needs a bit of heat I think that's all it is um and it it works really well actually right let me find a word um curiosity maybe I want a smaller word really relic well that could work couldn't it yeah let's go for relic but it's a bit old relic and let's do our Oh look, that door colour goes almost too nice now. I think I need to whiten the edge a little bit. So it stands out a bit more. Whoopsie. I'm just running my scissors around it to give it a whiter edge. Get 
that white wax actually so it just needs to pop a bit out of that it's going to run a little bit around the edge might as well age the door a little bit too oh can you see my wax is at the back there it's crazy and every so often <laughs> i'll knock something and i have a bit of a wax avalanche and it's not great right now i want that to stand up a little bit more from the piece so i'm going to get some more of my scrap gray board in this case stick it on the back there I'll use my Pentart Heavy Body Gel again. I think I will be converted to this. It just needs that little bit of heat to get it gripping better, I think. And I'll put it offside so we can see this nice moulded bit. And we'll have a little bit more for my gentleman. He needs to stand out a bit more. He is supposed to be the focus here. So we want him to stand up from the piece a little bit, otherwise he's going to get lost in there. Oh, there's the cat. <laughs> the friendly neighbourhood cat. Here to see what's going on. Okay, hmm, I need to wiggle a little bit that way. Okay, uh, oh, where are we going to put our relic? Relic, it needs to be dirty a little bit as well. It's too white. In there. And we are almost there, folks. Thank you. Sorry, it was a longer demo today. I just wanted to really show you how good these chipboards and MDF can look when you play with them. And I say I love to use these two companies together. Um, I'll just use a bit of this patinery wax to just dirty that up a bit. It's too white, it doesn't go with the rest of the piece. There we go, that's better. And maybe a little bit of brass. You've got to be careful with the metallic ones on these cover up the wording there we go and i think it's done i mean you could do so much more so you could add some more textures you could glue on some micro beads some hobbles or art stones you could go to town with more embellishments you could build up the center more um have more layers popping in and out there I just wanted to give you an idea of how how these sort of pieces can look. So they are quite big, but you know they're no bigger than a big canvas. So they're not intimidating. Don't be um, worried by them. And I just love them. I think it just gives you so much. There's so many ways you could go with this big space instead of just using a regular square or rectangle canvas so check out wood outs for these bases and some of the small embellishments remember the key here and some of the cogs and then have a look at hobbylicious brand too um we've been stocking for quite a while now and we love them so i use the frame here some of these bits some of the craft boards so i've got hdf really thick then mdf not as thick but still thick and then thin craft boards so i've got different dimensions all playing with each other mixed in with molds and metals and all sorts of bits and i love all the different heights and textures so thank you for watching i hope you liked it and thanks ladies if you have any questions give me a shout don't forget our sale ends today and it includes these brands so these are in the sale 
so go and check it out and um i will hopefully be back next week i'm hoping with some news on some new collections so watch this space have a lovely day ladies bye bye excuse my hand